Okay, so now we want to compute the expectation value of Sx and Sy in our uh, state, our solution that we found in a couple of videos ago. So here's our solution expanded in terms of my SC kets. And to compute this, I need to expand my operator in terms of my uh, SC outer products. And I haven't really, uh, we don't have an expression for that yet, but we can get one very easily. So basically we know that in the SX basis, everything, uh, everything that we do for, for the uh, SZ operator in the SC basis would also apply to the SX operator in the SX basis. So basically what that means is we know that the SX operator could be written in terms of the SX ket outer products like this. So just like the SZ uh, operator was written in terms of the SC plus, SC plus outer product minus SC minus SC minus outer product times h over 2, um, the SX operator will be expressed in these uh, basis outer products like this. And so what we have now is our kets expressed in one basis and our operator expressed in a different basis. So what we need to do is can either we could convert these uh, kets to this basis or we can convert this operator to the SZ basis. And I'm going to do uh, I'm going to convert this operator to the uh, outer products of our SC kets. And the way to do that is uh, we found before, or I said before, I guess I just told you that our SX plus and SX minus states can be written as a linear superposition of these spin Z states. So I can use these to just basically plug in uh, for these outer products here. And I'll get a big mess here, but basically all I do is, so for this sx ket, I plug in this expression. And then for this sx bra, I just plug in the corresponding bra, which looks like this. And then I do the same thing with this term. And I get this. And then you just, you know, foil both of these terms out. So you get a total of eight terms of outer products. And some terms cancel and other terms add, and what you end up with is uh, it reduces to this, which I can represent in matrix form like this. So what I've done is I've taken my operator, which was originally expressed in my SX basis, and rewritten it to express it in terms of my SZ basis. And this is how, uh, this is the matrix I would use to represent my SX operator in the SC basis. So in the SX basis, the matrix I would use to represent my SX operator would look like the, uh, you know, it would be h over 2 times 1, uh, 0, 0, minus 1. It would look just like the SC operator would look in the SC basis. Uh, hopefully <laughs> that's not confusing. Uh, but so we have, we've, we've done what we wanted to do. We've converted our SX operator to, or we've written it in terms of our a, a, SZ uh, outer products. And just as a note, it would be much quicker to work that out in the, uh, you know, representation. So if we want to uh, find out the matrix representation of our operator directly, all we would have to do is, well, we know these uh, SC, SX kets in terms of our SZ kets, and we can re uh, read off what the representation of those would be in our SC basis. So, you know, SC plus is 1, 0, and the SC basis and SC minus is 0, 1. So if I add these two together, I'll get 1 over square root of 2, 1, 1. And so we can use these representations of our uh, SX kets to compute these outer products. And that, if you work it out, you will get the same matrix. So again, it's just much quicker 
to work in representations than to do all the ket algebra. But uh, either way you want to do it, you can do it. And the answer you get is the same either way. So we have our SX operator expressed in terms of our SC basis. So now we can compute the expectation value of SX in our state. And I will, again, I'm going to use the representations to do that to save me some time. So our bra will look like this. So we just take, you know, turn it into a row vector, take the complex conjugate of each term. And then we have our operator that we just found here. And then that's acting on this ket. So we just do some matrix algebra here, eh, the matrix on here. And what you end up with is this. And uh, is this equivalent to what we found before? Well, we said before that if we took, uh, you know, initially the angular momentum to be along the x-axis, then it should go as cosine omega t, or omega is gamma b. Well, if our initial angular momentum state is along the x-axis, then, well, uh, that would be this state. So it would tell us that our coefficients would be uh, 1 over square root of 2. They would both be just 1 over square root of 2. And so if we plug that in to this expression, then uh, I will just get 1 over square root of 2 times 1 over square root of 2, which is 1 half. And, similar, and same thing here. So I'd get a 1 half and a 1 half. And so I'd have an e to the i thing plus an e to the minus i thing divided by 2. And that is just Euler's formula for cosine. So that matches with what we found in the classical case. And then I can do the exact same thing with my SY operator. So now I want to compute the expectation value of SY. And again, in the SY basis, I know that my I could expand my operator in terms of these outer products. And if my, uh, my and I said that my SY kets can be expressed as these linear combinations of my SZ cats. And so you could do the same kind of thing, either you know, work it out in the cats or work it out in the representations, and you would find that the uh, matrix representation of my SY operator in the SC basis is this. And so once we have that, we can just do the same kind of thing, compute the expectation value here, do all this matrix stuff, and we will find this expression and again, if C plus and C minus are uh, one half, so that, the com so that the angular momentum is along the x direction initially, then we will get e to the i thing times e to the minus i thing uh, divided, well, you could write this as divided by 2i, and you would find that this is Euler's formula for, uh, well, technically it's minus sign. So last time I said it was sine, but technically... Um, the angular momentum, I mean, the torque is in the, the S cross B direction. So if S is initially along the X direction and B is along Z, then X cross Z is uh, minus Y. So technically, uh, y, uh, the X, Y component should go as minus sine rather than sine. But either way, it still processes. It just processes in the opposite direction from what I draw, drew before. Uh, but so it coincides with what we found before. So uh, the sx goes as cosine, and the expectation value of sy goes as sine, basically. And just as a bonus, I computed the, uh, this should be expectation value of S y squared and plus SY sx squared. And we said before that the magnitude of the projection of s on the xy plane is constant, so if I compute this, I get that the time dependence cancels out. So this is constant. So everything matches up with the classical problem.